Hello and welcome to the first ever tutorial done by me. This is NXLora to Blender to Gmod. Ba-boom. Now, uh, to get started, you need to get a copy of Blender. I don't care if it's off the off of Steam or off the internet, you're going to need one. Next is going to be NXLora Tools. That's going to be the first thing in your downloads list in the description. Blender Tools for NXLora. Blender tools for source, source tools. Notepad++. Now this is not something you technically need, but it's better than not having. Uh, you can use normal notepad, but this is better, as said by the plus plus. Uh, VTF edit, this will allow you to look at VTFs and VMTs. Crowbar, I'm actually going to give you an older version of Crowbar that should help with compiling better than the new one. The new one is 3.3, or 0.33. The old one is 0.24. The old one works a little bit better. And Blender, you already know about that. And a collision uh, mesh thingy with Google. Uh, just the Valve developer community, uh, just this whole, you know, the wiki is great for trying to figure out anything out. Um, really, it's great. You'll you'll love it. Okay, to continue on, uh, empty your recycle bin and figure out what's in there. No, nothing. Uh, basically, we're going to use this model right here. So, <laughs> them titties. I didn't even notice that. Dem titties. She just got a nice uh, rack. Download, and it will go into your right over here. Uh, download, you know, those two. Uh, start a blender. Uh, delete this cube. Press X and click delete. Do um, user preferences. Sorry. Uh, install from file. Go find your file. Uh, mine's in downloads. And click on it. Install from file. Then click the check marks by it. It should be the only one that pops up also. And save you user settings. Now you should have, if you did that for both of them, source engine and, oops, uh, NX Lara. So we'll do NX Lara, import XPS, good, great. Now, here's the model. I've been using scroll wheel, that's middle mouse and scroll wheel. Middle mouse, scroll wheel. And shift to move around. This is very easy stuff. And five does isometric, and you can center that by pressing three, one, seven. And you can press four, eight, two, and six to change the angle in each one of the places but we're going to use not isometric okay let's go up to the model it's in many pieces select one of the pieces click AA and join now we've got all the bones in that select the bones go into edit mode select press A to deselect all the bones go over to the bones the armature in that and select layer 2 then click AA to select all of them and delete them. Those are not useful and will mess up your compiling process later. Take your mesh, shift, actually, yeah, shift click and select the mesh, then the bones, control P, parent with empty groups. Now this will help with things later. Uh, take your mesh, go over to weight paint, set limit total, and change it to three. This is a very easy way to get it to work with DMX a lot better. Now, DMX does not like to have too many verts per bone. Uh, it's it's weird. SMD doesn't have this problem, but DMX is a lot better format for a lot of reasons. Okay, go back to object mode. Select, um, there's usually a bone down here. It's usually like root ground. Delete that. That's the only bone we're gonna delete off of her. Every other bone is pretty useful. Okay, um, select the bones, scale them up to 30, and let's take that and let's end there. Except that that's where it's going to export to. We got to name her FFA Sexy. That's what I've named her before when I tried to do this. Um, and now we're going to set her materials. Now to do that, we're going to pull this little tab over here and select shading so we get to see all of her beauty. 
in textured form. Pull this little lines over, not again, and move that bar over, UV, and let's center this out a little bit. And now select our body, go into edit mode, press A to deselect, and ugh, whatever that is, select this, and this, and what is this? This looks like a uh, frill underscore two. Uh, I already named these, but you can you will be able to name them whatever you want. Remember to put dot vmt. Ah, Whoop! Little bag on my arm on all of them, and this is frill one. Frill dot vmt. Select mouth dot vmt. Just want to ingrain it in your brain. Select hair dot vmt. Now you can name these really simple and get away with it because each um, you can set each model have specific folders for each of their textures, so they can have really simple ones and they can have really complicated ones. It's just how much you want to type. Base dot vmt uh, i dot vmt hand dot vmt Ooh, look at that doing great uh, body dot vmt and there we go we've got all of them listed all of them named now we're going to select the model go over here export as dmx good great one file is exported, great. Now let's load up a second window of Blender and go to the uh, import source engine. Now we're just gonna check on our model here, our DMX model, and it should look pretty fine. You might notice these dark spots from before. Those are flipped um, verts, they have duplicated. So they're gonna be fine on here. Uh, probably not on most models. If you really want to fix those, just select them. And so just selecting the whole model, changing faces to flat so you can really tell which ones are bus, you know, and then just flip direction. You can set it to, you can set it to recalculate and sometimes it'll work and sometimes it just doesn't. So we're not even going to, I'm not even going to mess with it. Okay, so the next thing on our list is creating a fizz model. Now, I've already created one for this, and let's open it up. Uh, make a new armature. There we are. Here it is. Fizz model. Now, what you can tell about it is it is weird. It looks weird. Basically, this in... The coding, this is what's rendered, used to render it, the physics, how it bounces, how it moves, how it bends in the world. In Source Engine, you don't need any of this because there are no physics. Physics don't exist. Now, the way these work is instead of looking at where each vert of this touches the world and moves and uh, it just looks at where each one of these blocks touches the world and these blocks are assigned to a bone and so it's very easy for it to tell what is what and who is who and so creating one of these is relatively simple what we got to do is we got to let's change it to an isometric mode press uh, we're going to do with one change it to wireframe z and go into create cube and go into edit mode on the cube bring that cube up and we'll start it with a right here uh, make it about the size that you want it three changes your perspective and I'm gonna subdivide this to make it a little bit more rounder to get it a little bit more of the shape I want uh, there we go nope a little bit bigger there we go Okay, that's good. And uh, now I'm going to do it for two of the legs. Oops. I'm just going to duplicate the same shape and rotate that into place and bring it up, bring it in, and duplicate and pull it over. Actually, let's make that a little skinnier. Let's make this one a little skinnier too. Okay, now we've got that, and uh, 
There we go. Okay. So now we've got two parts. Now what we're going to do with these parts is we're going to select the model, parent it to the bone mesh, so we already know how to do that, with empty groups, select the things again, go to edit, select only one basically block at a time, one segment. Don't select two, one segment goes to one bone. This is key for knowing, for it understanding how it works. Assign that, there we go. Assign this one to uh, right, I think it is. Right thigh, assign, select, deselect. And this one goes to left thigh. And now what we'll see about this is when we move the bones in pose mode, they move together. So that's great. Good, good. Now the only other thing we need to do with this in Blender change it out of that, is select the bones, go to pose mode, go over here, select start to zero. We're going to create a, basically a reference um, animation. It doesn't do much, it's usually stated as a ragdoll or ref, it, or idle even. It's just a base animation. Basically it really has to be nothing, but we're going to select everything, so AA, press I, location, rotation, and that should mark a keyframe. And then we're going to do another one, location, rotation. You can also use this. This will give you a better thing, I, and it'll just keyframe everything that's ever doing. But you still have to press I. Anyway, and we'll export that as SMD. Uh, whoops. We have to change it into object mode before we can do that and change it over to the folder we want. Now, there we go. Uh, let's export this just to make sure everything's going smooth and peachy. And let's load up the QC we've got. Da, 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 da. Okay, so we've got a QC here. This is the one I'm going to give you. Uh, basically, things that's needed. Model name. This is the name it's going to show up as. Model. Dollar sign model. Uh, this is what it is right now. So body. Uh, that's the file. Uh, it's flesh, so it's flesh. This isn't really too important uh, contents you need them to be solid opaque you need that there materials this is tells it where the materials are so models TCN amateur blah blah blah, blah. Uh, sequence here's that uh, sequence file ragdoll this basically is a you know reference file and this is about what you need now here's the collision joints now this is where we need to fizz model so we named it fizz we put it in there uh, mass, inertia, there's a whole thing on the wiki right here, and whole thing about it. It goes into some detail, I'd suggest looking at some decompiled models to actually get a better reference for it, and you can use this reference QC I'm going to give you for her. I'll also put the her in there, in the pack too. Um, so, yes, this is all fine and good, basically these these joint constraints tell how much each joint can move on the X, Y, and Z axis. So rotation, not movement planes, but rotation. And that goes for every bone you want to be posable. Uh, Source Engine can only have 32 posable bones uh, that are physics. It can have 127? 130 something? It can have a lot more. It can have over 100 and something bones if you're doing SFM. That's why she works just fine with having, um, how many bones does she have? Do, 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 it usually sells me, there we go, uh, 71 bones. You can't make all those bones posable, but you can have all those bones in Source Engine. Okay, so that looks good as it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Crowbar, which I have put in my, uh, this is not the correct version of Crowbar I like to use. Here's the correct version I like to use. Okay, this is all set up to use Team Fortress 2. Browse, and we're going to go compile. And now it's compiled. It was pretty fast because it was a very, you know, small model. Now we're going to tell, we're going to open this and tell it go to file. Now it will put it in that file we said um, folder placement here. So this is how you, you know, TCN. If you didn't, it would just put it in models. and. Yeah, that would be fun. 
Uh, so then we're going to go into materials, models, uh, TCN, and, was, and now we're going to make the materials. I'm leaving you a base material right here that I'll give with you in the pack. This is basically, you know, all you really need is this for a material. It just states where the texture is and what its name is. That's all you really need, but uh, having a little bit extra gives you more detail. So I suggest looking at more models and the wiki to give you more ideas on how you can make more things. Like you can add bump maps and light maps and uh, fong maps and spectacle maps. All these things do wonders if you know how to use them. But she doesn't have any, so we don't need any. So I have those all set up. So if we view in model viewer, she'll come out looking nice. Now the problem is hands. What happened to her hands? Why aren't they loading correctly? Uh, because I think I named them wrong. There we are. I named them wrong. They're supposed to be hands, not hand. And now what we have to do is export that. And the whole model, when you load it in, first of all, and look at it without setting up the materials, it'll all be checkerboard. That's just the way it's going to be. And you have to set up materials. Just click refresh every time you add in a new material to make sure it loaded in correctly and looks right. Refresh. There we go. Look at that. Looks just fine. Now we're going to put all these into the Gary's Mod directory. So basically just go over here. Uh, go over. Uh, let's open up another window for Gary's Mod. Wherever Gary's Mod lies in your Steam directory. I keep it on my E drive because that's my hard drive. Uh, that's Team Fortress 2. Uh, Gary's Mod. You're going to load this in Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod. Then you're going to put model, you're going to go deep into the thing, models, materials, copy that in, um, copy that in, paste. You get the drill. I've already done this. And you're going to do the same thing for the model. So TCN model. Gonna go to model, copy, Gary's mod, Gary's mod, model, and paste. Now, now we can load up Gary's mod and see how that looks. Now, Gary's mod takes a little bit to load, so we've got a little bit of time to kill. And you might say, "Oh, well, it's loaded." No, it hasn't. It'll break for a second there. It broke, and. You'll see when it actually finishes loading because the picture will start moving again. Or it might even change. It's a very odd one. I can't tell if it's moving or not moving. Oh, wait, wait, it's moving. Okay, start a new game. And construct. Do the oh no, one or more of my pills didn't load. Ah, Lewis is going to be mad. Okay. Crash worthy material right here. Um, okay, now we're going to go down to games. Gary's mod. Whoops. And this is how you're going to find any model. You're going to look for the name of the model it was over here. So, you know, it's under models TCN. So you're going to look under that, and you're going to look for TCN in the naming system right here. Here we are, and here's the model. And that's not the one I wanted. Here we are. And look, she's all ragdolly. Woo! And you can pose her. She's a little small, but you can size her up, and I wouldn't, and yeah. Let's spawn an NPC next to her, see you. Yeah, she looks like the size. Oh, shut up! No, no, no. Thank you for that gun. Oh yeah, I forgot. It doesn't have a thing. Oh. <laughs> anyway, there we go. We've got a model to work in Gary's mod. Yay! Tune in next week for another tutorial on something else.